Rhabdomyolysis. Rhabdomyolysis, also referred to as rhabdo, is the breakdown of skeletal muscle cells and leaking of cell contents into the bloodstream. Muscle cells die or break down due to traumatic and non-traumatic causes. The most common causes of rhabdo are trauma, such as accidents with direct physical damage to muscle cells, immobilization such as bedridden patients, patients who undergo prolonged surgeries in which there is prolonged pressure placed on the muscle tissue membrane, leading to tissue damage, and ischemia. Non-physical causes include infection and sepsis, in which muscle cells die because of depletion of ATP or energy supply. There are also medication-induced rhabdo, such as from statins, corticosteroids, diuretics, anti-malarial drugs, and illicit drugs. Regardless of the cause, when a muscle cell membrane is injured, there's an influx of sodium and calcium into the cell. Remember that water always follows sodium, so that causes swelling inside the cells and resulting in disruption of cell structures. Influx of calcium causes persistent contraction in the cells and leads to energy depletion. Eventually, the injured cells are unable to compensate, resulting in cellular death, and their cell contents such as potassium, calcium, myoglobin, uric acid, creatine kinase, and other materials enter the bloodstream. And this can lead to several complications. Acute kidney injury is the most common complication of rhabdo. Myoglobin, a byproduct of muscle cell death, is an iron-oxygen carrying protein that can cause obstruction and renal damage. The presence of myoglobin in the urine is what causes the characteristic dark, tea-colored urine of rhabdo due to the iron component in myoglobin. Uric acid is also a byproduct of cell death, and it can form crystals in the kidneys and damage renal tubules. Besides myoglobin and uric acid, the dead cells also release electrolytes into the blood and cause hyperkalemia, or elevated potassium in the blood. There is also an imbalance of calcium in which hypocalcemia occurs with initial injury, as calcium moves into the muscle cells, but as the cells lies, calcium gets released to the bloodstream causing hypercalcemia. Both hyperkalemia and hypercalcemia can lead to cardiac arrhythmias and possible deadly rhythms. Other complications of rhabdo include disseminated intravascular coagulation, or DIC, which is a clotting disorder due to the release of thromboplastin during muscle injury, and compartment syndrome, especially with traumatic causes. That is due to the release of cell contents and its fluid, resulting in swelling in the affected site where the trauma occurs which puts pressure on the vessels and impedes blood flow. Signs and Symptoms The classic triad of rhabdo symptoms are myalgia or muscle pain, weakness, and myoglobinuria, which is the presence of myoglobin in the urine causing the dark tea-colored urine that is only seen in rhabdo. Although less than 10% of patients present with all three of these symptoms, it is important to know this for test purposes. Most patients are asymptomatic and have mild abnormal labs. The most sensitive lab test for rhabdo is creatine phosphokinase, or CPK. CPK is an enzyme found primarily in the heart and skeletal muscle. An elevated CPK indicates leaking of CPK from injured muscle cells. Normal CPK level is 20 to 200 international units per milliliter. CPK levels of more than 5,000 have increased risk of AKI. As mentioned earlier, myoglobin is an iron-oxygen-carrying protein that can be tested at early stages of rhabdo. However, it has a short life and may already return to baseline before rhabdo was suspected. Interventions The goal of rhabdo treatment is to maintain adequate fluid resuscitation and prevent acute kidney injury. Patients may receive up to 10 liters of fluid per day, unless contraindicated to maintain a urine output of 200 to 300 mauer mel per hour until stabilized. Sodium bicarbonate may be added to IV fluid to alkalinize the urine or make the urine less acidic to prevent precipitation of uric acid and myoglobin. As with all fluid resuscitation, strict IS and OS should be maintained. Monitor for signs and symptoms of fluid overload such as crackles in lungs, pitting edema in extremities. It is also important to monitor for cardiac arrhythmias due to potassium and calcium imbalance. 
place patients on continuous cardiac monitoring and obtain 12-lead EKG to monitor possible peaked T waves, VTAC and asystole seen in hyperkalemia, or prolonged QTC seen in hypocalcemia. Standard treatment for hyperkalemia includes giving IV regular insulin with dextrose to push the potassium back into the cells, calcium gluconate infusion to stabilize the cardiac membrane, and prevent arrhythmia. However, calcium should be used with caution, as rhabdo is already associated with elevated calcium levels. Hemodialysis may be needed for severe rhabdo with severe kidney injury. In summary, rhabdo is the breakdown of skeletal muscle cells due to various causes including trauma, immobilization, and sepsis. Rhabdo can lead to acute kidney injury, hyperkalemia, and hypo- and hypercalcemia. The classic triad of symptoms are myalgia, weakness, and myoglobinuria. The most sensitive rhabdo lab is elevated CPK. Treatment of rhabdo include fluid resuscitation, monitor for acute kidney injury, monitor for cardiac arrhythmias, and treat electrolyte imbalance. When you see rhabdo on your nursing exams, think of these highlighted keywords.